Well, good morning, everybody. Good, morning. good to have you here on this nice, toasty morning outside. Right? We're going to start this morning. I think Teresa's still coming in, right? You? <laughs> I thought she'd probably be in. <laughs> We're going to start by turning to uh, number 42 in the uh, white worship book. It's turn your eyes upon Jesus, but it has the verses on it, so it's a little bit different. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know how to close that because I have one just like it. Your walker. Oh. It drove me nuts because I have really good calluses on my hands from it. And it's not the thing I Yeah, Mark even anymore. taught me how to do it, I think. Yes, I did. That's the one, Steve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. I do have two other ones that belong somewhere else. So.
prepared any more. <laughs> so, uh, welcome, and I'm going to ask John to come up and take over here. Okay. He's going to preach the whole sermon and the whole yes, deal right now. Yes, he's going to do it all today. Yes. Uh, Maybe uh, Glenn's not going to be able to tolerate him the rest of the day. No. I knew it. Yeah, I need to speak less today, so I'm going to do it. Well, good morning on this frosty morning. When we left this morning at Lake Pleasant, we uh, I had to get out the scraper. Scraper for the first time. So. And I was down to 20 because I go down in the swamp. Yeah, yes, we go. So, um, we'll start with any uh, morning announcements. Anybody have any morning announcements? We're just going to have Marty back. This is a big blessing. Yes. She's yeah. sort of walking. So I still have some dog orders. <laughs> there we go. And then Saturday morning, we're going to be peeling 100 pounds of squash. Yeah. So come on down. 100 <laughs> pounds of squash. <laughs> I've never seen 100 pounds. Now visualize that. <laughs> yes. You mean Saturday and Sunday and Monday? <laughs> we're doing the squash Saturday. Okay. Yeah. 9 o'clock or so. Yeah. Sounds good. How about birthdays, anniversaries? We don't have many of those. They usually all come up in one month. Somebody yes. told me it's somebody's birthday next Sunday. Next Sunday? Well, we can say it until next Sunday then. But yeah. It won't be here. It won't be here. Oh, oh, so you're talking about me? <laughs> 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 if I was here, go. Look at my wife, but look at this. No, no. You're not going to come back? And <laughs> Next Sunday, yeah. Well, they've been here longer than they were going to. Yeah. But they're very welcome. I don't welcome. know all these uh, part-time visitors that skip out us on us in the winter. Well, if you have something to live in. <laughs> yeah, that's the, live, live in, live for, right? There you are. There we go. All right. We'll sing happy birthday to John. Thank you. Just in case he doesn't come next Sunday. Exactly. Uh, okay. <laughs> Give me understanding, 
that I may live. Our opening prayer, which is inspired by our gospel reading this morning. O oh God, sometimes we cannot see you. We search for you and have to strain to hear your voice. And yet you come to us wherever we are in our sinful lives. You forgive us and change our hearts through the grace of your Son, Jesus, and his liberating love. Forgive us again as we thank you for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now if you'll turn to our next hymn, which is number 451 in your United Methodist hymnals, Be Thou My Vision. Yesterday, Walter's the young man who almost cut his foot off, and we, we talked to him. He's doing very well, but he has a very long road ahead of him. Um, he had gone to Albany Med on Friday, supposedly to schedule a surgery, but he had a little infection. So he just his, he and Chris, his wife, need prayers, and it was just such a joy to see such a wonderful turnout of people who bought the chicken dinner, which was great, and participated in the in the turkey tray. Because he's not going to be able to work for at least mm. a year, if if ever again, you know, depending on how he heals. So it was just nice to see that in this community. Keep us posted about that. I will. Thank you. Thanks for sharing. It's wonderful to have a visitor with us today. Welcome. Welcome, Debbie. Two. <laughs> <laughs> I saw you sneak in later. Yes. <laughs> Who else? All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer in general and for, for the world and for all of our concerns, whether they're spoken or not. Brothers, 
Excuse me, precious Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you for all the good things you give us, for all the praises you, that we've listed here this morning and things that we are uh, not remembering to do you thanks for, because uh, you bless us with many, many things, actually with everything we have, and we, we do praise you and thank you for it. We also listed some concerns, some personal concerns about family and friends and, and uh, neighbors. Lord, we, uh, we thank you for being involved in those concerns, and we, uh, we know that you are not forgetting any of them, that you're with, with them all. We ask that uh, you, you let us keep us informed and let us know how we can be effective in, in uh, helping those that are in need. Lord, we uh, come to you with great concerns, as always, for, for our country, for our world. We pray for our leaders, Lord, that they would lead as you would have them do. Let them listen for your voice and your presence. Let them lead without aggression. Somehow, Lord, let there be peace. But we know that you have a plan for everything, and and we don't understand, but uh, we leave it in your perfectly capable hands. We know that you have a, have a plan for it, and it will work out for the best for all of us that believe and trust in you. Lord, we pray for our own country, for the things that are happening in our own country that we don't understand and we don't like. Lord, we ask you to guide our leaders here in our country, that they would lead as you would have them lead. And in our churches, Lord, we pray for our churches. There's some strife in some of our churches. We ask you to, to be in the midst of all that discussion and, and the, the uh, things that go on in our churches with our church leaders, the pastors, the, all the congregation, all those that lead in whatever form. We're all leaders and ministers in our own right. Lord, we ask you to touch all of our hearts and let us Lead as you would have us lead. We pray for our schools. We pray for our students and our teachers. We pray for those closest to us, our family members, our brothers and sisters, mothers, fathers, children, grandchildren. Lord, and last but not least, we pray for ourselves. We all have our own needs and concerns. We trust you to, to be involved with them and uh, we know that you will be with us through whatever comes our way. We ask for those concerns that have been raised here today and for those that are silent, that are too personal for us to share with each other. But Lord, we know that you're with them, with all of those. You know our every hair on our head. You know what we need. You know what's best for us. We trust your judgment and we give you all the praise and glory for all. And now we come to you in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's the time that we, we can get back, so I ask the ushers to come forward if they would, please.
Father, we do praise you and thank you for these, these gifts. Lord, you gave them all to us. Now we give a portion back. Now we ask you, Lord, that you give us some guidance on how to use them best, whether it be in this church, this community, or in your world, Lord. We need your guidance. It's all for you. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you would turn to 378 in your United Methodist Hymnal, we will sing Amazing Grace. Chapter 1, verses 1 to 4. 
The oracle that Habakkuk, the prophet, received, Habakkuk's complaint. How long, O Lord, must I call for help, but you do not listen, or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrong? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem and the righteous so that justice is perverted. Now if you'll turn to page 1458. I'll read in chapter 2, verses 1 to 4, which is part of the Lord's response. I will stand at my watch and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. The Lord's answer. Then the Lord replied, write down the revelation and make it plain on tablets so that a herald may run with it. For the revelation awaits an appointed time. It speaks of the end and will not prove false. Though it linger, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, he is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous will live by his faith. Our gospel lesson this morning, and our second scripture reading, is taken from Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and that can be found in your pew Bibles on pages 1630 to 1631. Sakai's the tax collector. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Sakai. He was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but being a short man that he was, he could not because of the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed the sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, He has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times that amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save what was lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. So am I singing first or, or, or sermon first? Well, <laughs> You can pray and then do whatever you want. <laughs> okay. And I'll pray for you as well. I'm looking at this and I'm going, wait a minute. I'm yeah. going to pray before you do yeah. your sermon, and, and but then I'm going to sing and you're going to sit back down. Well, so I don't know, whatever you want to do, I'll do it in whatever order you well, want to how, do this. Well, how about we do this? I'll, I'll put this up here. I'll sing. And I'll pray. And you'll pray. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Precious Heavenly Father, we uh, do lift up John to you today. John is uh, going to share in song. An anthem for your glory. And Marty will accompany, so I'll pray for Marty as well. Okay. So, Lord, for your, for your glory, we present John and Marty. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Steve. That's great. First, I have to get the music. And then bring it up with me. Take your time, Laura. Take my time? Yes. Let's see if we get up here. Let's see if we get up here. Yeah. Uh huh. We got there. Mm -hmm. Should have stayed here. <laughs> Mark, getting, getting set up. Steve asked me, uh, we were having dinner the other night, he says, well, since it may be your last Sunday, John, how about doing an anthem? <laughs> Can't say no over <laughs> dinner, right? So I said, okay. And uh, <clears throat> it's interesting that we sang... Amazing Grace this morning because 
the song that I'm about to sing to you as a little story. And um, I'll be brief. Uh, but it was written by a preacher. And this preacher happened to be overseas in the countryside. And maybe you've heard this story before. If you haven't, um, <clears throat> let me share it with you. He actually wrote this song in the middle of a thunderstorm. And you can kind of feel that through it. And I think it was God talking to him and telling him <clears throat> to look around, to see what's before you. And um, out of that, over the years, um, next to Amazing Grace, it is one of the most popular songs sung in churches around the world. Uh, here's an arrangement that uh, Marty looked at me this morning and rolled her eyes. And um, she yeah. said, you sure you don't want to sing it out of the hymnal? <laughs> um, but I really like this. So, uh, I'm really glad he does. Hopefully it'll work out well. <laughs> He did it with a, the ranger did this with a black paintbrush. <laughs> Here we go.
I was going to make it. Very nice. <laughs> thank you for sharing. I must thank Marty. Yeah. I handed this to her Wednesday night at dinner. We didn't practice. <laughs> I've sung it many times. I just said, keep and, going. And I told her this morning, relax, we're going to be fine. And it turned out great. Right? Thank you, Marty. I appreciate thank it. Thank you very much. Nice job, Marty. Yeah. I don't know how you play it. <laughs> I told you, paper. All right, very nice. Well, welcome, everybody. So, good morning, family. That's what we are here, family. And I hope you're ready to climb today. You've got your climbing shoes on because we're climbing, climbing a tree with, <clears throat> excuse me, I call it Zacchaeus. <laughs> Zacchaeus, not, not the way you pronounced it, but that's the way I've been brought up pronouncing it, so you'll hear it my way. That's fine. <laughs> so, we, anyway, we're climbing. We're going to take a mental, we took a mental hike up at Mouth Mountain a few, well, several weeks ago, quite a few weeks ago, so here we're going to climb a tree. So, we're going to climb a tree to uh, have an encounter with Jesus in a different way. So, I'm going to ask you, what would you do in a certain situation? I'll start by sharing some words from, from a man who wrote a song called, What Would You Do If Jesus Came to Your House? So I'm going to share those lyrics with you. And think about this as I share them. If Jesus came to your house to spend a day or two, if he came unexpectedly, I wonder what you'd do. When you saw him coming, would you meet him at the door with your arms outstretched to welcome your heavenly visitor? Or would you need to change some things before you let him in, like burn some magazines and put the Bible where they've been? <laughs> would you let Jesus walk right in? Or would you rush about to hide your worldly music or put some hymnals up? Oh, I know you give the, do the, give the uh, very best and nicest room to the, your honored guest, and all the food you'd serve him would be the very best. And you keep assuring him that you were glad to have him there, that serving him in your house was a joy beyond compare. <coughs> but would your family conversation keep up to normal pace, and would you find it hard each meal to say a table grace? And the songs that you would sing, and the books you like to read, would you let him know the things on which your mind and spirit feed? Would you be glad to have him meet your very closest friends, or hope that they'd stay away until his visit ends? Would you take him with you everywhere that you planned to go, or maybe change your plans for a day or so? Would you be glad to have him stay forever on and on, or sigh a sigh of great relief when he's finally gone? You know, it might be interesting to know the things you do if Jesus came in person to spend some time with you. So what would you do? What would you do if Jesus came to spend some time with you? What would I do? Does that make you think? Is your mind wondering what you would do? If you've been following along with my daily devotions in the upper room uh, that I follow the Disciplines devotion, the devotional and my daily comments, you've already heard my mind wandering through a lot of things about the scriptures through the week. You never know where my mind is gone, going, so. <laughs> but they were all assembled in a group to draw us closer together, draw us closer to God, strengthen our faith, and our understanding of what God wants from us. So let's pursue our journey a little bit further today. Or shall I say, let's climb. Through the scripture that John read, from the Gospel of Luke this morning. Zacchaeus was a short man, a, to a tax collector, in the days of Jesus' time on earth. How do you feel about tax collectors? For many of us, I think it's safe to say that our first choice would not be to hang out with that type of person, necessarily. I know, I know a couple, but uh, I mean, I don't spend a lot of time with them. They're pleasant, but... It's not them, it's the job they do, I guess, but anyway. Quickly, we can see that there's a difference between Jesus and most people, because we hear this from our scripture. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, 
Come down immediately. I must go to your house today. Yes, Jesus told Zacchaeus to come down, and Zacchaeus had climbed up that tree because something had stirred his interest and made him want to see and know more about Jesus. What was that that he wanted to know? What do you think made him want to see and know more? That he would climb a tree and ask. And I'm so glad you asked, right? What do you think? <laughs> I was just talking to my son Mike Friday night about the computers and modern technology and how far we've come in our lifetime. And he mentioned he could remember when the only games he could play on TV was, was Pong. So, do you remember that, yeah, perhaps? I do. <laughs> well, I remember, and I, as I shared with him as we sat in the house that I grew up in, I didn't have electricity or TV until I was in seventh grade. So things were a little different for me. There was no pawn. But anyway, technology has come a long ways, hasn't it? So if we wanted to see somebody walking in a parade nowadays, we could get a drone and go overhead, and then we could sit in our living room in our lounge chairs and watch it on a white screen TV, right? But the Zacchaeus couldn't do that. It's amazing what science has brought us, and it's fascinating and how creative minds can dream up such talent technology and make it happen. But what's more amazing is the God that brings it all to us, because that's the God that teaches that technology, shares everything with us, and gives us everything, gives us everything. How can we wrap our minds around that? Around a micro, microchip, for example. Oh, can you see a microchip? microchip? Probably not. I mean, they're so tiny you can hardly even see them. But it's amazing that those inventive minds could create that. But, but the most amazing thing is God put in Zacchaeus' heart a chip, a hole in his heart, like he does to all of us. I, you know, I, uh, I say that uh, God created us at all with a hole in his heart that makes us des desire him. You've heard that from others. I mean, I didn't make it an expression. God has created us all with a desire to know and want him more. So God urged Zacchaeus, for some reason, he was called to go up that tree to look for Jesus and come down and spend some time with him to, to know more. God gave us that chip in our hearts, that hole in our hearts, to want him more. So like Zacchaeus, we climb figuratively to seek and know more. And as we learn, we want to know and more, come more, become more about him. We too have become willing to spend time with him in all types of creatures and people in his creation. Because that's what he generally teaches us to do, to love everybody, right? To love God and love each other, the two greatest commandments. How do we do that? Well, we spend more time with God and learn from him how we can handle those people that not, we won't, uh, not necessarily want to spend time with. Did you notice the cover of the bulletin today? Mm -hmm. There's a man on a car patch there. Did you see Jesus in that picture? He's there. Can you see him in that homeless person on that bench? As we strive to get a better look and understanding of Jesus, let's ask ourselves, what if Jesus came back like that? Like a homeless person? I'm going to share some more lyrics of a song, because that's where my heart is in music, right? But this, these are some lyrics written by Colin Ray. What if Jesus came back like that? He came to town on an old freight train, and he jumped off in the pouring rain. Everybody says that he's insane. Just a low-down, no-account hobo. He made his bed beneath the county bridge. The city folks said, hey, that's not his. They signed a petition. They're going to get rid of that low-down, no-account white trash. What if Jesus comes back like that? On an old freight train, freight train in a hobo hat. Will we let him in or turn our back? What if Jesus came back like that? What if? What would we think? She was born into drug abuse. She couldn't, couldn't help what her mama used. It wasn't like she got to choose. Now she's laying there all alone. Got a monkey on her back. The nurses say they never saw a smile right then. Doctor says he might, she might stand a chance if somebody takes her home. What if Jesus came back like that? 
But nobody said life is fair. We've all got a cross to bear. When it gets a little hard to care, just think about him hanging there. Just think about him hanging there. He came to town on a cold, dark night. A single star was his only light. A baby born that silent night, a manger for his bed. What if Jesus comes back like that? Where will we find our hearts are at? Will he let us in or turn us back? What if Jesus comes back like that? Will he cry when he sees us where our hearts are at? Will he let us in or turn us back? What if Jesus comes back like that? What if Jesus does come back like that? We don't know when he's coming back or how he's coming back, except we know he's coming in the clouds, right? We know that in the scripture. He's coming back one of these days. We don't know how, or what form he'll be in. But as we climbed the tree with Jesus today, and to have a better look, with Jesus, look at Jesus, what have we seen? Do we know Jesus any better? Do you know his wishes for us? As we asked ourselves what we would do if Jesus came back to our house to visit, what are our thoughts? What would we do? As we looked at the person on the park bench, who did we see there? I'll leave you to think about those questions and with these reminders. These reminders. Jesus is at, our, at your house and at mine. He's everywhere. He sees everything we do, good or bad. Jesus is in that person, with that person on the park bench, and he's with the whole world. He's with the people with drug addictions. He's with us all. But he doesn't want to leave us in need. He wants to help us. He wants us to see him in everyone. That's what he wants from us. He gives us everything, but he wants us to use what we have to help others. Softly, Jesus is calling. He's reaching out to you, to me, in the Psalms, in the scriptures today in worship. He's calling. He's calling you to share with him. Come down on that tree, out of that tree. Spend some time with Jesus. Come home. He's calling you to come home. Amen? Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and drawing them even closer together as we sing the, uh, the uh, hymn number 599 in the hymn of Break Down the Bread of Life. And I think, I think we're getting the passing of the torch here. <laughs> we're blessed to have... Thank you, a switch. Hello. We're blessed to have such talent here. I'm already yeah. surprised me. <laughs> I got your book ready. I'm ready for this. <laughs> we'll make work. We'll get to work. Sure you are. Yes, you are. You did that other one. Come break the water. I can do that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Bye, Mark.
and, and that we've all been invited to this table because it's Christ's table. It's prepared for all of us. It's not one stumbling block that we can think of that would separate us from the love of God in Christ. God's grace clears the way for all of us. So let us humbly seek to live in peace and grace for all. Let us humbly come before the Lord God, confessing the ways we have sometimes turned away from God's love. And I'll ask you all to join me in this prayer. Merciful God, God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken in your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And Reverend Roy has blessed these elements before he left us a couple weeks ago. So uh, they're all uh, consecrated. So let me pray here. You can follow along if you'd like. Creator of heaven and earth, we come before you with thankful hearts. On the night that Jesus died, he invited his disciples to come to the table and partake of the bread and the cup symbols of the new covenant, soon to be written in his blood. They represent to us the body of Christ and the blood that was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. They, they, um, <clears throat> on the night, the night that Jesus uh, was with his disciples, he left them this tangible remembrance. And we continue to share it to this day. We remember the many, my, many mighty acts of Jesus Christ. And we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, joining with Christ's offering for us. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here today. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world as we remember him at this table. In Christ's name we pray. Now I'm going to turn to 1 Corinthians 11, 23 to 26, and uh, share this verse with you. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he, he was betrayed, he took the bread, which he had given thanks, and he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup. And said this, this is the cup of the new covenant of my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death is it, until he comes. So now I'm going to ask John to come forward and help me share agreement with you all. I'm down there. I'm going to take the communion by intention, which means you break off a piece of the bread and then you dip it into the cup. You're all invited to come. If you can't come forward, we will share. Uh, we will come to you. So uh, you're off. The table's open. Body of Christ open for you. Body of Christ broken for you. Now it's open. Christ broken for you. Thank you. Body of Christ broken for you.
pray. Heavenly Father, we do give thanks for your holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Please be with us and direct us. Let us go into the world in the strength of your spirit and give ourselves for others. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's continue our prayer. and Lord, we pray that we may have heard your word today in the songs, in the scriptures, in the words that we shared with each other. Lord, let us learn how to uh, serve you better, to serve our brothers and sisters in Christ better. Lord, you called us here on this earth. You called Zacchaeus down out of the tree. You called us from wherever we are. You called us because you needed us to continue your work here. Lord, let us learn how to do that better. Let us continue learning from you and let us learn from each other and let us Go out and share with others that they may also be workers in your field. We pray you pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Now uh, we continue with our benediction for today. Oh God, it's the same benediction we used for the prayer in the beginning. Sometimes we cannot see you. We search for you and we strain to hear your voice. And yet you come to us where we are in our sinful lives. You forgive us and change our hearts through the grace of your Son, Jesus, and his liberating love. Forgive us again as we thank you for your presence in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and amen. And now let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. It's a beautiful sunny day, beautiful to share the gospel with others, right? Amen. Thanks for coming. God bless. And uh, Crystal's going to play a little bit more as we uh, go out. You can stay and sing, or you can... Uh, Go as you're allowed to do. So it's, uh, let's see, it's number uh, 672. If you'd like to sing along, God be with you until you meet again.
Thank you.